What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of Through Paint that was just released by Fredo 6. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as a lot of you know, Through Paint is an awesome tool from Fredo 6 designed to help you fix your material mapping and do other things with materials inside of SketchUp. Well, there's a new version that was just released that you can get from the Sketchication plugin store. So I will link to this in the notes down below. It is currently free. Um, it's listed as being free until at least the first of February of next year. So I definitely recommend that you download it and give it a try. So if you've used through paint before, um, you know that previously it was contained inside of the Fredo tools extension, which is a little bit confusing for some people, but now it's its own standalone extension. And so when you install it and you want to make sure that you update your version of lib Fredo as well, um, in order to get this to work, I had to update my lib Fredo in order for this little bar to show up. But basically what it's going to do is if you click on any of these buttons right here, it's going to pop up a window that looks like this. And so this is the first thing that you're going to notice is now there's a material browser associated with this tool. So what that means is that means you can get in here and you can find your own materials. Um, so notice how if I click in here, for example, um, I can see things like the different folders. You can just go to your materials route right here and link to all, and open up all of these different folders right here. So one of the things that I think makes this a little bit better than the built-in tool is there's a search function. So if I click in here and I want to find carpet, for example, if I do this, notice how this is going to find carpet in any folder that I have in there. So like, for example, I've got some custom carpets in here, or if I was to do like a brick, for example, it's going to go through and it's going to check all of these folders. And not only is it going to search um, the default SketchUp folders, but it's also going to find materials that are in other folders as well. So this can be a faster way to find your materials. Um, one thing to note is if you do want to add a custom material in here, what you want to do is you just want to click. So I'm going to go back to my materials root, but say you wanted to add a custom materials folder, like I have a custom external folder. You can click on this button right here, click on the option for add a material top folder and add that additional folder in here. Then you're going to be able to see whatever is in that folder. You can also adjust the size of these thumbnails by clicking and dragging this right here so you can see these see these a little bit better. So um, that's the first thing is the material browser. Um, I do think it has some additional functionality on top of the SketchUp one over here. So if you want to use that, great. You don't have to in order to use the other tools inside of Fredo tools. Um, but notice how we've got four different tabs in here for different things that we can adjust, right? So you can, uh, you can paint faces, edges, objects or edge properties. And depending on which one of these you select, you're going to get a different menu option at the top of the page. So let's say, for example, um, that we were to toggle off through paint for a second and just apply like a tile material to this object. And I always use an object like this because it just kind of demonstrates really well what's going on. Well, um, SketchUp doesn't quite know how to apply the materials to this complex object, so it doesn't necessarily work. However, with through paint, if I was to try to do this, so I'm just going to select this material. Notice how I get this window at the top of the page right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a tool that I can use in order to adjust this material. And at the moment, notice how nothing has changed. All I want to do is I just want to toggle the UV mode and then apply this. So if I pick a different UV mode, notice what it's going to do is it's going to UV map this material so that it sits on top of this object properly. And so this is where the real power of through paint is, is not only can you use this to map materials, you can also single click on those materials and you're going to get a little bar that pops up like this that allows you to do things like move them, scale them, rotate them, really whatever you need, you can do on this more complex surface. And so this functionality hasn't really changed to a super high degree from what was in there before. It's just that the user interface has been changed and there's a couple other options. Okay, and so real quick, you can tap the tab key in order to pop up this window right here um, in order to get back to your material browser and you can use this to select materials. But notice how things are going to look different in here depending on which one of these options I have selected. So this one, for example, is going to apply a material to an entire face, right? So that's going to apply it to the entire face, or I can click on this option right here for surface. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to apply this to individual tiles. Well, not only can I apply it to individual tiles like this, I can also click and drag in here 
with that surface option selected. So you can use this in order to do more precise painting. What I might do in a situation like this one, for example, is this is going to be a terrain. But then if I tap tab, go back into my asphalt and concrete, I could use this to paint asphalt and concrete along the surface like this. Okay, and so there is one other option I want to draw your attention to um, before we kind of move on to the other features. That option is going to be, if I was to tab in edit mode right here, notice how there's an option for face side in here. Well, what face side is going to do is if you don't leave it selected, it's not going to do anything, right? So if I just mouse over this and just click on this to paint all connected faces, notice what it's going to do is it's just going to paint these faces. But if I toggle over into monochrome mode, notice how it painted the back side of the faces in addition to the front side of the faces. However, and this is a pretty cool function, actually, if you click on this option right here for flip orientation of face according to adjacent painted face, what it's going to do is not only is it going to paint the faces, it's also going to flip these faces to match the face orientation of this object right here. So now if I click in here and I apply a material like this, then I jump over into shaded mode right here, or monochrome mode, notice that it adjusted the face orientation of those objects. So now all of those faces are facing the correct direction inside of SketchUp. Okay, and so I want to take a look at these other options, but first I want to I want to point out something that I'm finding really helpful. So there are settings in here. If you click on this option right here for default parameters, you can set the way that through paint acts. And specifically, I'm going to focus on this first option and the second option. So what you can do is if you check this first box and click save, what that's going to do is now if I tap the B key to activate the paint bucket, it's going to activate through paint instead of the SketchUp material tool. So if you want to replace the SketchUp paint bucket tool entirely with through paint, you can do that just by selecting that option. Now for me, I don't necessarily want that because for a lot of my quick materials, um, I don't necessarily need through paint, but the second option is really interesting to me, which is launch through paint when calling twice the SketchUp paint bucket. So what that means is that means if I tap B to activate the paint bucket, nothing happens, it just acts normal. But if I double tap B, it's going to pop up through paint right here. So being able to quickly access through paint and the SketchUp bucket tool, at least to me, is really valuable. This is probably something I'm going to be leaving on um, because I want to be able to get to through paint quickly um, in case I need it. So there's also an interesting function over here that allows you to paint objects based on the angle of the faces. So right now, for example, if I apply this material to the surface, it's going to apply it to the entire sphere. Right. However, if I click one of these options, so picking either the same direction or the same direction or reverse direction, I can apply an angle in here and then put something in here. So if I put in like 25 degrees or something like that, notice how it's going to find all of the faces in here that are within 25 degrees of whatever face I have selected. Um, if I mouse over this and I change this to like 45, notice how I get a different selection in here. So there are cases where I can see this being valuable. They're probably pretty niche cases, but it is still kind of an interesting feature. All right, so now if we select the edges function, what that's gonna do is exactly what it sounds like. So if I go back to my materials route and let's pick one of these color fans. These are just uh, collections of colors. Um, so we'll just do the RAL Classic. And and these are just the colors that are associated by um, number in here. But say that I wanted to adjust the color of an edge, I can select a material and then I can mouse over these edges and I can apply this right here. Now, I think this is superior to what the paint bucket tool does because I can actually see what's being highlighted when I mouse over it. Okay, and so you might have noticed that this first option only applies materials to faces. So this option for paint objects is specifically designed to help you apply materials, but also tags to different objects. So in this case, right, I want to apply a material and a tag to the outside of this group. I don't want it to be on the individual faces. So I'm going to cl click the option for paint objects and use this in order to paint those materials. So if I click, it's going to apply the material to the outside of the group as well as a tag. The other cool thing about this is you can select a tag from a list and have it apply a tag when you apply the material. You could also just use the default material and then use this to just paint tags in here if you wanted to do that. Notice how now 
this cube has been put on the cubes tag because I had that selected. All right, and then this last option is going to allow you to set edge properties by clicking. So for example, say that I wanted to soften a bunch of edges and I wanted to do that really quickly. Um, this allows you to set whatever you want those properties to be. So maybe you wanted to soften, smooth, and hide these. You can select all of those like this. But then you can just come in here and you can click on the different edges and apply those properties to these objects like this. So in some cases, this can be faster and easier than selecting them and applying them individually or messing around with the check boxes over here, that kind of thing. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about through paint. This is one of the essential tools for SketchUp, in my opinion, for working with textures, but I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about the new features? What do you think about the tool in general? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.